Hey guys, welcome back to the Malware Analysis Bootcamp. In this video, we're going to be talking about analyzing strings uh, or strings analysis as it's also known as and the tools we'll be using to perform uh, the strings analysis. So first of all, what is uh, strings analysis or what is the process of analyzing strings? Well, simply put, it is the process of extracting readable characters and words from the malware. Now, of course, these are in reference to the actual strings. Now, strings can give us valuable information about the malware's functionality. All right. And the malware will usually contain uh, useful strings and other random strings. Now, these random strings are, are also known as garbage strings. Now, they're usually just there uh, as strings that you have to sift through. Right. Which is why this uh, is put into a the process of an analysis. Right. Because we have to go through what is useful and what isn't useful. Now, strings are usually in ASCII and Unicode format. So we need to know, understand that uh, in order to uh, because we need to specify this uh, the, the type of strings we are going to want to extract during the analysis as some tools only extract ASCII. So, for example, with ASCII, we are limited to uh, 128 characters. Uh, and with, Uni uh, with Unicode, you have up to uh, 128,000 characters. So uh, through that entire uh, range of characters, we need to specify what type of strings and what format we're extracting. Right. So the types of strings we're looking for are primarily going to be file names. Uh, URLs or domains uh, the malware connects to. So we're looking for command and control centers, uh, how the malware is communicating with the attacker or how it's communicating with the command and control center. We're looking for any IP addresses that it may be communicating to or with and any registry keys that it is using for either setting up persistence or whether or not it's uninstalling or causing damage to particular registries. Um, now, one thing to take into consideration is attackers may also include fake strings to disrupt your analysis or the analysis process. Now, as I said, the whole idea of uh, analyzing strings is to understand uh, the functionality of the malware. And uh, as a result, many, uh, many attackers design their malware knowing that their malware will be analyzed in at some point. So they try and include fake strings to sort of uh, throw uh, the analysts off course and to sort of uh, give them various ideas as to the functionality of the malware. So uh, one thing, uh, another thing to take into consideration is that strings will only give us a glimpse of what the malware can do. It sort of gives us the skeleton of what the malware can do. It will not uh, reveal uh, the entire picture. And this is primarily where dynamic analysis comes into play. All right. So now that we understand the process of analyzing strings and of course, extracting strings, let's take uh, the tools that we can use to both extract and analyze these strings. All right. So we'll be using the strings command line utility available on both Linux and Windows. If you have the Flare VM set up, we then have the shell extensions tool, which is available on Flare VM. We have PE Studio and PEID. All right. So uh, for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be covering extracting strings. Uh, we'll be covering uh, the entire static analysis process of this particular sample uh, in the final video of the static analysis section. So uh, let's get started and I'll see you in Flare VM. All right. So we are back in Flare VM and uh, I've uh, essentially just uh, created a shortcut on uh, on my desktop here for the shell extensions tool. I'll explain more about this, but uh, let's navigate to our sample here. And uh, immediately if we right click and this is on Flare VM, of course, we can right click and we can click on strings and this will utilize the shell extensions tool. So if we click on it, it immediately gives us the strings that exist uh, within the file, right? So uh, we can find particular strings uh, or we can change the minimum size. But before we actually take a look at any of the tools that do it for us, let us take a look at how to do this manually. So uh, to do this, we use we can use the strings a command line utility tool. So let me just bring up a command line here or through Windows PowerShell. Uh, so again, Windows PowerShell and all I need to type in is strings, right? So once I type in strings and I hit enter, you can see that we can search for uh, ANSI and Unicode strings. So again, we can specify ASCII only. Uh, we can uh, specify the minimum string length, which is very, very important as it will allow us to sift through the random, uh, the, the random or garbage strings. Uh, and then finally, we have the Unicode only uh, search, which is again for uh, Unicode uh, for Unicode strings. Uh, now, again, why is this important and why is the minimum string length important? This is this is all in reference to the fact that uh, uh, usually for uh, ASCII only, uh, you are, you usually have about eight characters to work with. So, uh, so the 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 range will be. 
typically between uh, between four or six and eight. Uh, and then, uh, of course, with ASCII, you have longer amount of, or you have a uh, wider range of characters that uh, that can be used, or a wider range. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we are going to say strings, and we want to start off with ASCII only strings. So we can say strings a, and then the minimum string length, just to get rid of all the random code or the uh, the random strings, is we can say the minimum is going to be six. And uh, the file that we want to use is going to be this sample here. And you can specify the location or you can just drag it in. Uh, that will save you enough time here. And what we are going to do is, again, we can save this to a particular directory. So again, we can save the output to a file. Uh, so again, what I can do is um, we, we want to save this on, uh, we can say C. Um, sorry about that. So we can say C. And we will say uh, users and we'll say Internet uh, Explorer user and we'll say desktop and we will say strings.txt. All right. So strings.txt and I'm going to hit enter and uh, the output should be given to us right over here. So if we open up the strings here, you can see that the minimum amount of characters that was used is six. And uh, there you are. You can immediately see the string. So let's take a look at these strings and uh, the content that they might have. So we get the signature, this program cannot be run in DOS mode. Uh, and then we have some random strings here that uh, do have six uh, characters. Uh, so immediately we can see that we have some URLs here and these URLs look like they are, uh, they belong to a command and control center. So this, these are URLs that the, uh, the malware might be communicating back to or sending the credentials back to. Uh, we have a registry key here, which gives us a bit into what's going on here. So we can see that it uninstalls. Um, it probably uninstalls itself. Uh, and then we have uh, some other functionality here. So it looks like it is uh, enumerating the user. It then uh, it then enumerates credentials, which we already know is its primary function. So if we take a look at some of the other strings here, we can see that it is calling upon uh, Windows uh, uh, Windows specific functionality in regards to the system. Uh, so again, through the kernel 32.dll file or the various functions um, or the libraries that it's calling upon, we have the post request. So this is the uh, the format of the post request. So we do know it is communicating back to to, to, to the attacker. So we can see that. Um, we have the post request and then we have the variables for insertion here. So the data is being sent uh, through this post request and of course it's uh, specific or is uh, it relies on the data that's being sent so the host is also specified here so this is the post request uh, now we can see that uh, the other registry keys it gets are in regards to the internet settings and then it starts looking for these uh, various pieces of software and it begins stealing their credentials Right. So uh, again, we will be going through this once we take a look at the static analysis of this uh, of this piece of malware or this sample. So that is how to use the strings command line utility. Um, let us take a look at uh, how to do this using uh, the shell extensions, which I just showed you. So again, we can go to uh, strings, right click and go to strings. And again, we can specify the minimum size so we can say six and rescan. And if we type in eight, for example, which will give us uh, quite good uh, results here, you can see that we get only the relevant strings now that are good for us. Uh, so you can see that we get all the strings that we got uh, when, when we use the command line utility. And right at the bottom with a tool like the shell extensions tool, you can see that we get the Unicode strings. Now, again, you can use the, uh, the command line utility uh, to get the Unicode strings. And of course, you just need to specify the U here instead of the A. So again, uh, for this particular case, we're going to keep it at six and uh, we'll say U here. And uh, we will say we'll get rid of this strings.txt file here and we'll hit enter and that will give us the Unicode strings uh, only. So you can see we have some random string here and it looks like there is a URL to Facebook and we have another key here or a serial, which uh, we'll pretty much we'll, we'll be taking a look at this when we get to the uh, actual process of uh, analysis or, uh, or analysis of these strings. So uh, right at the bottom, we get the Unicode strings and then uh, we, we get the ASCII strings right over here at the top. And you can also specify whether you want the offsets that that's usually important if, if you want to use that. Now, for example, we can start searching for the strings within this. So we can say, uh, look for 
any strings that have HTTP. So if we were looking for a particular domains or URL, so we could say find, and it tells you we've got six hits. So if we hit find, it gives us all the relative URLs here. So find, and we get all, all the, that we're looking for. So again, a very, very useful and helpful tool. Um, let's take a look at um, let's take a look at PEID first because uh, that gives you again a basic overview of these strings. It's a very useful tool. Um, so if we take a look at the first bytes, you can see that uh, we have the ability, we have the offset, of course, uh, and, and of course this is the disassembler. But if we go to the strings, you can see we have the offset and the actual strings, and we can search for strings right over here. So. Uh, that's also something that you might want to take a look at. Uh, you can use any of these tools, whatever suits you. I personally like using the, the command line utility, mainly because I can document whatever I'm finding really easily. Uh, but again, another tool that I like using a lot is the PE Studio. So we can open that up. We'll give it a few seconds to start up. And of course, this gives us the hash. It gives us the first bytes in hexadecimal, the uh, first bytes, uh, the text, the first bytes in text. In text format, uh, you then have the file type, the CPU architecture. So we know it is a DLL. Uh, that's the file type which we took uh, we took a look at uh, when talking about file ed identification. Uh, we then have uh, the strings right over here. So if we take a look at these strings, these strings are sorted out uh, really well for us. We have the type, which could either be in Unicode or in ASCII. Uh, in this particular case, it did, doesn't look like we got the Facebook, uh, the Facebook string with Unicode. But if we go back to ASCII, we have the size. You can navigate by size. So the biggest, uh, uh, we have the biggest ASCII string here, which is the post request. So if we take a look at it right over here, let's enlarge that a little bit. You can see that we have the post request. Um, we have various registry keys, etc. So again, you can navigate. Uh, fr uh, you can navigate with these various filters here. Uh, as for the hint, of course, this gives you hints uh, in regards to ones that might be uh, of, of particular use. Uh, we then have the group. So if we take a look at the group here, uh, these are all in regards to the uh, functionality and the libraries that have been imported, which I'll talk about uh, as we when we move along to into PE headers, because that's a very important topic that we need to cover. So you can see that uh, we have um, strings like set assigned primary token privileges, uh, and this gives you a bit of uh, an idea in regards to its functionality and what it's capable of. So uh, these are this is how to perform a basic string extraction and analysis. And uh, hopefully I've covered all the tools that you can use for this. Now, I know I'm not covering w uh, any Linux specific tools, but I'll be making various videos on that and setting up the various environments for Linux. So uh, this was just a basic video in regards to strings, uh, string extraction and analysis. Uh, in the next set of videos, we'll be talking about uh, the PE headers and uh, the various other headers that exist, looking into the functionality and the libraries. And then finally, we'll end the static analysis section uh, with the uh, full-on analysis of this particular sample. So uh, I'll see you in the next video.